Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Couple Goals. It is episode four. Yes. And it's Thanksgiving. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. And uh, I figured, why don't we start off with something that we are thankful for? And by the way, we're not wearing headphones in this episode. Oh, no. Because I know all the comments are going to be, wear the headphones. <laughs> so we're not wearing headphones. There was a slight crinkle in it, and uh, it was bugging me. Yeah. So, so we, de- we decided to exit. So let us know. Do you guys like the aesthetic better without the headphones? Uh, do you like seeing more of my head? Do you like <laughs> seeing more, more of Sandy's face? I know I always do. But yeah, let us know in the comments. And what are we thankful for? What, speci- like something specific, you know what I mean? Yes. The well, baby is new to you. Yes. So I'm actually very thankful for this uh, music teacher that I have. I have been taking singing lessons. What? <laughs> and we're having a recital in a few weeks. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity to live out a dream that I've always wanted to do. I feel like a dream sounds a little excessive and crazy, but... It is something I've always wanted to do. Only to people that don't have dreams. <laughs> so out of curiosity, what would be the, you use the term dream. That's major. Yeah. So like, what would the ultimate dream be? If you could see yourself in the future, singing, being a part of a moment, what is the crescendo for you? I don't know yet. I think once this recital is done, I'll probably have a better idea. I think I've always just wanted to have the courage to be able to sing in front of people, regardless if I'm great or not, just to have the confidence to do that and see where that confidence leads me. And and that being said, I think there's a lot of people that don't pursue things because they might be a little bit nervous, a little bit self-conscious. Is there some kind of advice that you would give to them to maybe break out of their shell a little bit? I would definitely say just to do it. Take a leap of faith. You don't have anything to lose. So Full commitment in the mindset. So that's very exciting. I'm I'm very thankful that you're going to allow me to go to this recital. We'll see if I'm thankful that he goes to the recital. So let's see. Historically, I I haven't been the best attendee for people's (laughs) events or anything like that. I get a little bit excited. Some people say I'm kind of embarrassing. But it's okay. I'll be there with my sign. I'll be holding it up. I'll be yelling for you. It'll be fun. I'm excited. What about you? What are you thankful for? Right now, it sounds kind of corny and kind of goofy, but I'm really thankful for Hot Wheels. (laughs) And I'm thankful for a gentleman named Hot Wheel Mike that I met today who opened up my eyes because I just got in a couple weeks ago to the concept of like treasure hunting Hot Wheels. When I was younger, I worked at Target and I was aware that people would come in like every time that we restocked these things and they would buy buy these limited edition ones, but I never knew the full extent. And, uh, you know, that's something that I've been into recently and it's just fun. You know, I think by nature, I have this kind of addictive, obsessive personality and anytime I'm able to find something positive that I could put that energy towards, it's just an all around win. And, and, you know, maybe it could be like an inheritance of some degree if I keep (laughs) on getting these hot wheels. Cause today I went to, I think four locations a uh, house of cars included, and it, there, there's only like five of them in the United States, and we live by one. Oh my gosh, maybe we shouldn't give that information out. And they there. got everything. <laughs> They got everything. I mean, I went in there. They got like meats on the weekends. So I'm excited that I, I, I'm going to be embracing that culture. And uh, yeah, it's just something cool that I'm stoked on. It is really cool to learn it like via you and your experience. Um, because I remember we went to Walmart not that long ago, and there was like actual adults going through the Hot Wheels. And I was shocked because I don't normally go through Hot Wheels section. But there's a lot of people who are very into this. Oh, yeah. I mean... I went into this uh, Walmart today and it's kind of hard to tell, you know, like what areas might be very dense with collectors. And there was a gentleman there, like I said, and he was looking through the cars and you just know. It's very obvious when somebody is hunting. It's very (laughs) specific. And I was talking to this gentleman and he let me know that where we're at, it's like heavy. Like the Walmarts, the Targets, you're not going to find anything. And evidently the employees actually hide them so they could buy them for themselves or they could tip people off on little secret ones that they got. Oh, my gosh. So I'm going to have to get creative. You're probably going to have to like slip in a 10 or $20 bill to one of these employees. You know, uh, what, I, what I've learned is, yes, it would be nice to get these like ultra exclusive ones and I'm always going to be hunting for them. But it's really about the story. You know, like today I bought one that uh, the Hot Wheels Mike recommended me. <laughs> and I'll always have that story. Whenever I look at that, whenever I share that piece with somebody, I could always talk about this cool guy that I met, uh, you know, some things that he shared with me and that's what I'm in it for I like to look at something and be struck with a memory and have a nostalgic moment like that so I'm excited about building up those moments well and what a way to start off your Thanksgiving week you know 
Uh, it's starting off strong. Uh, I mean, I found an ultra rare chase at 7-Eleven a few weeks ago. I've been riding the high on that. I mean, because it was the gender reveal high I was riding, then the 7-Eleven chase I was riding. So, yeah, I'm thankful for all kinds of things, that being one of them. And I'm thankful for this uh, podcast. Me too. You know, so what's, what are we doing today? What are we doing today in this podcast? Talk about it. Well, I actually, because it's Thanksgiving, I wanted to see what is your favorite Thanksgiving memory. My favorite, so Thanksgiving has never been like the biggest thing in my family. Is it in yours? Is it like a big event? It used to be huge, yes. One of my favorite memories that involves Thanksgiving is my grandma, rest in peace, but this was 15 years ago, and it was on the day before Thanksgiving. We were living, me, Shane, and my mom in the San Fernando Valley. My grandma lived about an hour away, and it was up to me to go pick her up the day before. I left in the evening. I tried to avoid the uh, afternoon, evening traffic, mm. which if you live in LA, you know what's up, but I picked her up, and I when I was taking her back, there was like no traffic, you know, and I was very excited about about that but i wanted to call my mom and prank her and tell her that i got stuck it's gonna take us like 10 hours there's all these accidents going on there's helicopters everywhere i don't even know when we're gonna be home but don't worry we'll make it and i called my mom that was the story me and my grandma were going with and it was only like we we're 20 minutes away but my mom was worried she was kind of freaking out a little <laughs> bit and then she was expecting us to be home at like four in the morning and then 20 minutes later we pop up and it was just funny you know <laughs> and my grandma was just always down with the jokes and whenever i think about thanksgiving it's usually involving her we'd go to like denny's you know she loved denny's or like fuddruckers not many families go to a burger spot on thanksgiving no but we would do stuff like that and uh, yeah just hanging out with my grandma that's probably my favorite memory looking back that i could really like you know it's tangible to me Oh, that's really sweet. I'm a very sweet guy. Yeah. Well, I know for us, it was a little different because my mom has like 10 brothers and sisters. So we have a big family. Our house was usually the house that everybody would go to and we would just stay up really late. I just remember there being a ton of food, a ton of families sitting around the table and just talking all night long. Well, that's very sweet. Yeah. I do remember a Thanksgiving memory that we share. We were going to a family member of yours house. And they had like this whole thing where on the side of the house, they had tables lined up and they had food for days. I mean, when you got 50 people coming to a, to a potluck and they each bring a little bit of food, it's just massive amounts of food everywhere. And then there was like a select amount of people hanging out inside and there was a big L-shaped couch. And I just decided the most comfortable seat was like right in the center of this L. And I'm kind of notorious for falling asleep. You know, if I go somewhere for more than like an hour and a half, I might fall asleep. And I just remember I fell asleep on this couch in between two of your family members that were talking. Even though I was sleeping, they were just talking, you know, back and forth over me. And everyone thought it was so funny that I passed out at, uh, at your family's house for Thanksgiving. I actually remember this. And the funny part is that it wasn't even my family's house. It was my sister-in-law's like oh. sister's family and her in-laws. And so there was like a ton of people we didn't know. Oh, I mean, so wait, these were strangers that I was sleeping around? <laughs> I think that's why we thought we found it so odd that Jared, after we ate, he just sat down in the middle of this couch and just passed out. And I'm talking, he was snoring passed out. And her guests were just talking like to each other over you. No big deal. And I just remember me, my sisters and my brother being in the front yard because there's this huge window and we could kind of hear him snoring in and out uh, while he was sleeping. And we just found it to be funny. It was great. I didn't know that I was one step removed away from strangers. I thought these were all family members that we were hanging out with. So that's new to me. But yeah, I would say between us being together, I mean, there's a lot of fun memories, but something about that just always has stuck out to me as like a funny one. But yeah, I mean, those are uh, some of our favorite Thanksgiving memories. Yeah. I mean, so hope, like you guys, leave your favorite Thanksgiving memory in the comments. Yeah, let us know what you love about Thanksgiving or a great memory you guys have. And maybe your favorite uh, Thanksgiving memory could be the day that you rang that notification <laughs> bell because you're so thankful for these podcasts. Yeah, and it goes... Ding dong. <laughs> so on that note, awkward segue. Well, what are we doing next in the podcast? I, I know that you have like some questions that you had lined up. Yes. You had sent me a few earlier. I get five, you get five. And, and explain the premise of this. I looked up these questions from the Gottman Therapy. We've already brought it up before. Is it Gottman? Because like, how do you spell it? I want to say it's spelled G-O-T-T-M-A-N. 
Got okay, yeah, Gottman. That sounds right. <laughs> yeah, and so a follower actually on Instagram r- recommended us to do like a little quiz. So I thought that's a great idea. So how are we going to start this? What's the, what's the? So the concept is going to be the really essentially just would you rather question. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to just answer what I think Jared is going to say. Okay, how about this? You are going to ask me a this or that. The first one, I will hold up one finger. And if I want to do the second one, I will hold up two, and I will not reveal them. I'll keep them in my lap like a like a catcher does, and then I will lift it up and see if you're right. And I promise, Scout's Honor, I will not lie. Perfect. Okay, so the first one is going to be, would you rather spend the next year exempt from all taxes or have one month of paid vacation? I think at this point in life, if I'm thinking of, what the value of a one month vacation is. Oh, wait, now I'm talking it out. I'm supposed to do I this know, thing with my I'm, fingers. What the hell am I doing? So here? I'm actually- okay, okay, how about this? <laughs> I'm messing it up right away and I just laid out the foundation for it. That's not good. So let me just, we don't need to make this a whole thing, one or two. So uh, I'm going to say he's going to pick one. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Because that might uh, pay for a month vacation, anyways. And it's always great to not owe the IRS money. Exactly. That's what I thought you would say. Okay. Perfect. So the second one is, would you rather always speak your mind or never speak again? Obviously, anybody who's watched a video you've you made <laughs> would say That's a no-brainer. <laughs> okay. I'd rather speak my mind for sure. Yes. So our next question is going to be, would you rather put a stop to war or end world hunger? This mm. one is going to be a tough one. Ooh, okay. I am. I'm. I'm chosen. You. You already got one. Yeah. This is one of. This is almost like a disgusting one because it's very hard. Obviously, I would rather do both in this scenario, or in the other, I would not rather do either. But uh, I've chosen. So I'm not really sure what he would say. So I'm just gonna take a take a big guess. Okay. One or one or two. One being the first, two being the second. I think you would say. Did you already show it? I did show it secretly. Well, I think with my eyesight, did you do two? I did do two, but is that what you were thinking I would guess? Oh, I okay, don't so, know. Okay, so I'm, take, I'm taking the secret move out of it now. <laughs> That's not too secret. I, I thought you were looking at your phone. But, you know, I would rather end world hunger because I think if everybody was well fed, maybe <sighs> – it sounds ignorant, though, because war is such a complicated issue to discuss. But for for the sake of the podcast, I would rather end world hunger. You know what's funny is I actually did think you were going to say that before I asked you. Because I thought you were... We believe you. I thought you... <laughs> I thought you would say the same thing about, like, if every, everybody was well-fed, that maybe they wouldn't. Yeah. It sounds ignorant about halfway uh, of me saying it, but at yeah. the same time, it, it's not. Because it's... I just want everybody to be fed, and people wouldn't be hangry. Although I don't think hanger is what starts wars. It definitely is but not. But maybe it is. I'm sure if you look back in history, there is a war started because somebody was just super hungry, and were frustrated, and said, yeah, let's just do it. You know? So... <laughs> At some point, maybe you could stop a war. Okay, what is the next question? All right, so would you rather give or get bad advice? I believe Jared would rather get bad advice because he absolutely would just not take it. Yeah, uh, be, because <laughs> even bad advice could lead you to an intelligent thought down yes. the line. Where if you give bad, well, then I guess it's kind of the same. Because if I were to give someone bad advice, they could find something really intriguing and uh, insightful in that. Yeah, but, but me- I would still rather rather get it because then I could just brush it off. But I also feel like not everybody has the same thought process as you, so maybe they would just take your bad advice. Yeah, so I, I'm feeling <laughs> even better about my answer. Yeah, I'd rather get bad advice. Exactly. Okay, so yeah. the last one. Is going to be, would you rather lose your keys or your cell phone? This is a tough slash easy one. I already got my finger up. What do you think I'm going to say? I think Jared would rather lose his keys. I forgot whether this means keys or not, but keys is what I had in mind when I put up one finger because I could just go buy more keys. It would suck to not be able to get into my car, but how am I going to call AAA without my phone? Exactly. So I would definitely rather lose my keys. I want to say it's 100%. I think you got it all right. Of course I did. Of course you did. (laughs) Were you expecting that going in? Was it like, would it have been a shock if you got one wrong? Not not a complete shock, but I think, you know, 
I think I get you. So is it my turn? Do I yes. get to ask you the questions? Yes. And are we going off of the same principle? Are you going to hold up a finger and then I'm going to guess and you're going to reveal it? I can. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Would you rather have an unlimited gift certificate to a restaurant, one, or a clothing store? I'm going to put up my finger and then you're going to put up your finger. And at the same time, let's close our eyes and raise it. Okay. All right. One, two, three, go. I what? got it right. And look at that. Now I think this is a better system. I think this is a better system. Well, because I thought, you know, you eat every single day, sometimes three times a day. Yes. But how often do you go and buy clothes? I guess you could argue, like, if you had an unlimited gift certificate to a store that has, like, Hot Wheels or something like that, or, like, limited drops, then maybe you can use it to your advantage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But with an unlim unlimited gift certificate to food, you could also possibly end world, hu end world hunger. I didn't even think about that. You could How end awful. world hunger with that gift certificate. That would be rad. Yeah. That's so great. All right, next question. I feel great about this. I think we're not going to get any of them wrong, but maybe we'll get oh, one wrong. Oh, great! Maybe within he just this. jinxed it, you guys. Would you rather have many good friends or one very best friend? Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Open our eyes. Of course. Look at that. So why is that? Why would you only have one best friend? I would rather have just one person I can count on instead of multiple people that would not be able to to be there for me if I need them. I like that, and I'm with you. I, I would rather only have one friend myself. It's just easier to keep tabs. It's easier to be accountable to one person. Like, I actually feel stressed sometimes when I meet new people because I feel like, am I going to be able to offer them the kind of attention and a friendship that they deserve? You know what I'm saying? So it stresses me out to have a lot of friends. So I like to have a, a small group, uh, as Drake would say, circle so small it's a period, you know? <laughs> well, and I think, too, for me, I sometimes I feel like it's hard to make friends, especially as you get older. Older. And so when I do make new friends, sometimes I just feel awkward. Like, how do you get past being new friends to like we're old buddies? You know, it's like it's such a process and I'm kind of weird sometimes like that. I feel you on that one. <laughs> so next question. This is number three. Okay. Would you rather live in Antarctica or the Sahara Desert? <laughs> Ooh, this is a tough one. Okay. I think I, okay. Antarctica one, Sierra Desert okay. two. One, two, three. Open our eyes. One. I got it wrong. That was a crapshoot. I didn't even know the thought process going into that one. I was just hoping it's a 50-50 shot. I thought you would have already known. Why is that? Because I do somewhat well with the heat, not so much with the cold. Um, and I know that in the Sierra Desert, when it gets cooler, it gets pretty cold. So you kind of get both of you know, both worlds. You get more seasons in the Sahara Desert <laughs> than the Antarctica. And I also just recently learned that there's even lakes there, too. No way. Yeah. Very cool. So that was our first one that we got wrong. Yes. Kind of a bummer. But we got a couple more. So let's hope that I could get those. Yeah. Right. Let's hope, guys. Okay. Now we're fresh off of our first wrong answer. On to the next one. Would you rather be fluent in all languages or be a master of every musical instrument? That's my favorite one. That's a fuck. Ooh. That's a tough one. Okay, so let's let's go back on this. Fluent in all languages, number one, or master of every musical instrument, number two. One, two, three. Raise the fingers. Open our eyes. We're right. Oh. Oh, I, we I didn't back. think we were going to get that one right. I know. I, I, you know, I was doing. Uh, well, what's your thought process? It's your question. Well, you know, I thought it would be great to know every instrument, but I would want to be able to connect with a lot of people. And I think that's through language. But do you not think that you can connect through music? <laughs> no, you definitely can. <laughs> but I think you can connect on a more intimate level by talking to them, right? Although yeah. I do think it would be cool if there was a piano in the mall to be the kind of guy that could just like walk up to it and just play it and have everybody be like, wow, is that real? Yeah, and they just circle around you and just like cheer you on. Yeah, or just like go into a guitar center and fuck around with them and be like, hey, like, is this a good guitar I've never played before? And then just play like yeah. Jimi Hendrix or Beethoven <laughs> on the guitar. That'd be rad. 
But I also I've watched a lot of these videos where it's it's one guy specific that will go to all these different countries mm -hmm. and he'll go into restaurants. And when people see him speak their native language, it like blows their mind. They're super excited about it. And it's just awesome to see. So I'm with you. I, I think I would pick to know every language. Yeah. I would like to be that dude that does that. I think I've actually seen a few of those videos and it does not really blow me away. Just like the reaction to him. Yeah, it's yeah. very cool. I love okay, it. Okay, so I only got one wrong. So in order for me to bat at least 80%, I got to get this last one right for okay. you. Would you rather fight all the time but have great makeup sex or never fight and have mediocre sex? Ooh. Okay. This is, this is uh, a question. Oh, guys. So fight all the time, great makeup sex one. Never fight and mediocre sex number two. We're going to raise our fingers, reveal the answer. One, two, three. Open our eyes. Oh. Well, I that's I, just a, what do you got to say for that? Why did you pick that? I was just guessing your answer. So for me, I got it right. I'm good. Why you, would you say that? You know, I feel like that's a hard question, but I don't know if I would necessarily want to have to fight all the time. Just for great sex, and I would rather be able to work on the sex and not fight all the time. I like it. You kind of bent it because I feel like in this question, <laughs> it's a guaranteed, always mediocre sex. But it didn't specify if you're if you're having great sex only after a fight. Does that mean it's not good unless you guys are fighting? You know, mm. that doesn't feel like a healthy relationship. To so me. are you saying would you have chosen number one? That's if... not my question. I don't know. It was your question. <laughs> I got it right. OK, how about like if you would have sex all the time, even if you weren't fighting, but you fought more often I think that is okay. You could pick that one. I would pick that one. Okay. I don't even, you'd have to like say that again. That kind of, <laughs> so wait, we're fighting kind of all the time and then having sex as well all the time. But it's like, how is the sex? I guess I just have more questions for this question. Whoever wrote this article, uh, leave a comment. I'm sure they're watching. And leave a comment. <laughs> Let us know some more insight on what you were thinking when you asked this. Yeah, I guess my perspective is that when you fight, your cortisol levels go up. And I just don't want to have my body in complete stress all the time. I just want to be happy with somebody. And, you know, if the sex isn't the best sex of my life, I would rather just work on it until... It got there. Hopefully they can make you laugh at least. <laughs> okay. So that, that was fun. What that, did you think? I liked that. That was fun. Uh, maybe we could do it again because I think there was like 25 total questions yeah. in that and we only did 10. Keep watching on the episodes and see if we bring it back. And we got 90%. I only got one answer wrong. Mm -hmm. So it was really my fault that we didn't get 100%. But do it with your partners. Do those same 10 questions with your partners and let us know what you got. Yeah. Did you guys get 100? Did you beat us? Did you get 80? <laughs> did we win? Let us know. Yeah. Well, I thought that that was fun. Those were fun questions. But we did have a few questions from our Instagram um, stories a few weeks back. And I thought it'd be fun to answer those. Do you have like a fun name for your Instagram people? Like, uh, is there anything that you call them or that they call you? You know, are you are you doing that yet or no? No, I just call them friends. Friends. Well, that is a thing. That's great. I yeah. like that. So your friends so asked friend, us some questions. Yes. Yeah, so my friends a few weeks back asked me a few questions. And let's answer Although, them. Although you'd rather just have one. <laughs> but when it comes to IG, I, these are family. This is family. Oh, this ain't friends. So these, these are family. You yeah. know what I mean? These are fam. Fam. Because you can't spell family without the I-L-Y, which is I love you. But fam, I love you. You should say that right before we have dinner on Thanksgiving night. We should do that right before. <laughs> I, I've been thinking about, I kind of like to have like a fun, dumb moment with family every time we get together. And I've been trying to think, what am I going to do this year on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Maybe that's it. I'm sure everybody's looking forward to it and just wondering this whole week, what is Jared going to do? What is he going to do? I hope they're able to sleep. You know, <laughs> I hope they've gotten sleep and not just stayed up all night wondering. But let's do it. So what are the questions that your uh, that your fam asked you on Instagram? So one of the questions is, what's the best part of your marriage? You answer that. What is your answer? What do you think? The best part of our marriage for me is really having you to go to when things are hard. So whether things are hard because someone 
that I love is ill or I'm feeling like I'm not good enough at something or I'm confused. You really always have the right thing to say to me to help me, you know, get back on the horse, you know, type of thing and and push through. That means a lot to me. And it means uh, I'm glad that I'm able to do that for you. Yeah, because it's really hard when I'm going through a hard time and you tell me things that maybe aren't what I think I want to hear. I want maybe you to kind of like soak in it with me, but you're like, no, you can do this. And you're just so positive, And I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you appreciating oh, that. Gosh. Oh, geez. So my favorite part of being married is just having a partner in crime. You know what I'm saying? I like to have somebody that gets me that I could be myself around that appreciates me for the little things that might annoy others. <laughs> and even if it annoys you, you entertain me by letting me think that it doesn't annoy you. And uh, just that, you know, it feels very liberating to be yourself around another individual. And I appreciate you for letting me have that. So are you saying you appreciate <laughs> me because you get to tell me about your Hot Wheels? I appreciate you for <laughs> letting me talk about that. And even if in the back of your head you're thinking, this goofball, you're, you're, you're allowing me to experience something that I find joy in and you're motivating me to continue doing so. Where, you know, some people might just say, dude, that's, that sounds pretty corny. I don't know who in their right mind wants to go look at Hot Wheels all the time. You should get a life. But you just see that it brings me happiness and you don't take that away from me. I definitely don't think that when you're sitting there telling me you're going to put these in like Ziploc bags with, oh, the, yeah, receipt, with the receipt, with the notes. Because <laughs> and, and I'm going to write a little memoir, not a memoir. That sounds extreme. But I'm going to write a little note on the receipt because I want to have these memories. I want to look back. I mean, even like growing up, we, we moved a couple times and we've even moved several times yeah. during this marriage. And really, as far as like my personal belongings, that's my stuff. It really is only down to like one box of stuff that I've taken with me since I was a kid. And it's like one of my favorite things to do to look through this box to think about the times I have an old like WWF ticket where my mom took me and a buddy to see a WWF match. I have old lighters that I used to collect uh, comic books. And I just like that nostalgia. And I would like to, you know, be able to share those moments with as many people as I can. And, you know, I think that'd be cool. I'm excited about that. We'll see if those receipts hold up because I keep telling him that it's going to fade, but we'll see. I'm excited. They'll hold up. (laughs) Okay, so the next question is, did you guys go to the same school? No, I went to Milliken High School in yes. Long Beach, where I grew up. Where did you go? I went to Magnolia High School in Anaheim. And we actually met after we were already out of school. Did Do you know, because I don't, did our schools like play each other in sports? I doubt it, no. I'm almost certain that we didn't. Was your football team good? Oh, no. No. Ours was horrible, too. Yeah, I don't think they ever went to, like, CIF or anything crazy like Did you that. guys have any, like, thing about your school that was dominant? Like, did you have a maybe the, the, the girls' tennis team or, like, the girls' golf team was, like, champions or something? I or? think tennis was good, and I want to say uh, ba- our guys' basketball was good. And but, but I'm not talking good. I'm talking, like, great. Were well, you guys okay. notorious for having the most badass something? No. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, not to brag, but Millican High School is notorious because they filmed American Pie there. They filmed Popular, the television show there. And it's like a, a haven for filming sitcoms and things of that nature. At least it was in the late 90s. So every day I went to school, I was able to see things that I saw on American Pie. What? Not trying to brag. I mean, we, we had a horrible football team and a baseball team and all that stuff. You know what I yeah. mean? But at least uh, they filmed movies there. So that was cool. That is cool. We did have, again, like I said, we had some. Okay, how are you going to compete with that guy? I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> what did you guys well, have? Well, I feel like you had me go first just so you could throw in the, oh, yeah, they filmed popular here. And... I mean, I never heard about nothing about Magnolia, <laughs> so I figured the answer was going to be a no, but I was curious. I mean, didn't they, like, tear down Millican High School? Or what was They the would never tear down <laughs> Millican High School. It is a national treasure. It's actually kind of crazy because I don't know if, if this happened before or after COVID. I think after COVID and a lot of schools got a lot of money to, to do whatever they wanted with. But I recently drove by my... To do whatever they wanted with? What, <laughs> well, what is like the coolest did, thing a school did? What no, do you think? A, lot of, a lot of them ended up doing like remodeling. Like they, So oh. they remodeled their, their campus. So I just drove by my uh, junior high and it looks completely different. It looks like a 
dang college. Like, it's crazy. And then even my high school looks so different. I wonder if any of them were just like invested all in crypto. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're, we're going all in on Dogecoin. <laughs> what, school district? Just I, maybe, goes into Bitcoin? Why, hey, people were crazy during the pandemic. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if people did that. So, yeah. Great question if we went to the same high school. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so our next question is going to be, what are your guys' favorite snack foods? Ooh. Snack foods. You go first. Cool. I don't know what my favorite snack foods are. Well, name like three of them. If you're going to the store tonight, you just want a couple things to nibble on later, a couple snackity diddle bops. (laughs) What are three things that most likely we're going to find in your shopping cart? I do like some chocolate covered pretzels. Flips is the brand that you uh, really like, isn't it? Yeah, but it? The, the white chocolate one. Okay, so white chocolate pretzels. Yes, those are good. I also enjoy, you know, some chocolate chip cookies. Chunky, if I'm not mistaken. Some Chip Ahoy. Chips and, Ahoy. Chips Ahoy. <laughs> and um, I don't know, maybe. What about chips? Like, what's your favorite kind of chip? I did have an urge to have Cool Ranch Doritos. Those are those at one point were my go to. I ate them every single day when I worked at Jenny Craig. I literally every morning <laughs> I would go to Rite Aid and I would buy Cool Ranch Doritos and a Coke. And it was so uh, like predictable that I did this. The one time I came in late, I was running late. The boss called me, asked me where I was, and said, "Hey, I figured you were coming in, and just so you could just come right in, I went ahead and already got you your Cool Ranch Doritos and your Coke." Oh, that's so sweet. They loved me. <laughs> Um, what about yours? What are your snack foods? If I had my go-tos, that's a tough one. White chocolate macadamia nut cookies. The ones at Stater Brothers that their oven's been down for like three months, so I haven't <laughs> been able to get them. I would also say uh, one of the newer things that I've tried, because I'm not like a huge sweets guy. I'll eat them all if I have them. But I, I, I don't often like just go to buy sweets. But they're like mini Pop-Tart crunchy wafer things i don't know exactly what they are but they have strawberry and blueberry and they're like fucking incredible they're delicious i would say that's on my list and then the last thing i would have to go with i don't even know exactly what they're called but they're like hawaiian onion chips and they're just delicious that or sour cream pringles (laughs) first of all i want to say he has the biggest sweet tooth so him saying he's not a big dessert person is just I'm really not. The, I'm a savory guy. <laughs> like I would rather eat pizza all day as opposed to eating ice cream. I would I would rather have bread than I would have sugar, I guess. You always go for the for the, like the candies and like the sweets. Whatever. We agree to disagree. <laughs> What's the or next? Maybe, maybe your favorite snacks are just all the above. <laughs> there you go. I'm just down for whatever's clever. Like another question, perhaps. <laughs> What's the next question? Okay, so our next question is going to be, what is the most meaningful thing you've learned since being with Jared? That sounds specific to you. I knew you were going to say So that. what is the most meaningful thing you've learned since being with me? It's really just having confidence within myself. I've always struggled with that, and Jared has always been someone in my life who has always been, and this is even before we got together, has always been so positive and so encouraging on what I want to do and what makes me happy. And so he's really lifted that out of me on putting my my own dreams first, and that's, I think, just so meaningful to me. Wow. Yeah. I really, I really like that. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry if I made it a little bit awkward, but that means a lot to me that uh, that you feel that way. Yeah, and maybe you know, in a year or two, it'll be something different. But right now, in this season of my life, it's really something that's just. Ooh, is that a little phrase right there? This <laughs> season of my life, I like that. It's just meant so much to me, especially when I I get down on myself, and he just you know helps out. Well, I'm glad that I could do that for you. You're an amazing individual. I've known that since the jump. And anytime I could reinforce that in you and I could remind you of that, I'm happy to do it. And I love doing that for you. I appreciate it. All right. Now my turn. What's meaningful that you've learned from being with me? It's, it's, this is a bonus question because it wasn't <laughs> the actual question, but I will answer it. And I think it's just about connecting with people. You know, like I didn't necessarily grow up. 
uh, in an environment where I was ultra connecting with other individuals. I was kind of one of those like raise my raise myself to a degree type kids. So being with you, uh, you know, I've been more vulnerable with my emotions. I've, I've learned that it's OK to like share how you feel about things, which I really didn't do before. So I would say that I would say just being able to connect on a deeper level than I did before, because I, like I said, I do have this feeling of uh, almost being afraid to make new friends because am I going to be able to offer them, uh, you know, a satisfying friendship and whatnot. But you've taught me that just being myself, being vulnerable and connecting on that level ensures that I will always have meaningful relationships. Well, and I appreciate that, too, because I know it's hard. To not be used to being vulnerable, that can be difficult. Yes. So enough vulnerability. What's the next question? (laughs) And don't forget, being vulnerable connects us to each other. Comment below, are you vulnerable? And if you're not, be vulnerable and leave a comment about it. (laughs) Okay, so our last question is going to be... This is it. This is the last one. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be the funniest pranks to play on each other. Ooh, that's a good one. So obviously, I like hiding behind the door and scaring the shit out of you. Those are always (laughs) fun pranks. I'll start recording them so we could interject some of them into the podcast. Oh, that'd be fun. They happen frequently. I would say at least... Twice a week, I'm getting you pretty good. Yes. And then uh, my favorite thing is just to kind of like, this sounds mean, but kind of like ring you along for a little bit of a story and then reveal that it was all just a ruse. Like one particular that comes to mind is my mom found a bunch of Pokemon cards that my older brother Jake had in like the late 90s. And by Googling them and doing my online, you know, research, they seem to be worth thousands and thousands of dollars. And I got my mom excited. I told my brother he could probably quit his job if he wanted to because <laughs> he was going to be fucking rich off of these things. I took him into a professional grading store, someone who really knew the deal. And uh, they let me know that they weren't worth very much at all. Maybe like a couple hundred bucks. So they were worth something, but nowhere near the hundreds of thousands that we had predicted based off of uh, Google and eBay. And then when I left that store, I called you and you had known the whole deal, you know, and I told you that security had to walk me out because, you know, they didn't want anyone getting a hold of me (laughs) and robbing me. Maybe someone overheard us in the store. I had like a half million dollars in cards. We were going to be set for the moment. You know, we could get a house, all this crazy shit. And then you're like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm serious. You know, I got the security guard standing next to me. And then, of course, it was a joke. I told you the truth. And I don't know. That sounds mean, actually, now that I'm thinking about Very it. Very mean. But it's just funny. It's just goofy moments. And you know what? Going back a little bit to the question of, like, what we really appreciate about each other, I just like that we can have those moments and it's funny and we can laugh. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if everybody would be into that kind of, uh, you know, prank, per se, as often as I'm giving them to you. <laughs> he does those pretty often. Pretty often. I yeah. mean, if not almost every day, at least, I'm, I'm pranking you about, like, <laughs> Oh, I think like last night, for instance, we did a bunch of laundry because we had gone camping and uh, I told you that, oh, we got to go to, you know, we got to go to bed. Just help me make the bed real quick. Oh, and yeah. you were like half awake. You're like, oh, I can tell you're like, why didn't this guy just make the bed? And then you went to the bedroom and you saw that it was already made. Yeah. And that was, that, you that know was what? an, a good one. Yes. That makes up for the mean spirit to a degree of the <laughs> Pokemon cards. You know what I mean? I also do fun pranks like that. So, yeah. so what is your, like, what is your funnest, maybe the most recent prank that you pulled on me that you like? So I had a good time. We went camping this past weekend and, Jared bought these like and Jared, pipe them up, pipe them up. Jared bought these insane flashlights. Super great uh, price. I got a deal on them. Uh, even though my dad thinks he got some for half the price that are more powerful. <laughs> I think when we were comparing, uh, Dad, I know you're watching. I think my batteries were just low. I think my my flashlight is a little bit better. Yeah, and it's heavier, so it's also a weapon. You know, if if need be, it's also something I could protect myself with. So. Enough of that. Yes. Yeah, so you can have an idea of what these flashlights were like. <laughs> Very intense. <laughs> and so we were walking um, the dogs at night. And so we were camping right by the water. So as we were walking, I used the flashlight and I aimed it to the water. And I was telling Jared that I thought I saw something. And he freaked out. And he was just staring at the water trying to see what I was talking about. I thought there was a seal, a dolphin, a new species that hadn't <laughs> been discovered yet. That's what I was hoping for. And so I think it lasted maybe like two three minutes i was doing this yeah and sure enough there was nothing yeah and then you reveal that to me and you zinged me as they say and i will say i did it twice so yes. you would think he would learn but he did not but you know what 
who's to say that something crazy doesn't happen in the ocean at night? You know, it's a believable <laughs> thing that there could be something out there. And that's it. No more questions? No more. That's all. Ugh, you guys always leave me wanting more. Uh, I can't wait to prank you for the rest of my life. Thank you so much for asking about the pranks. And maybe in the comments, let us know what is your favorite prank that you've played on somebody or maybe someone has played on you. And I'll do that to Sandy <laughs> and I'll videotape it and we could put it in the next podcast. There you go. Or if you have any questions for us, drop them down in the comment section and we'll answer them next time. I can't wait. Me neither. And uh, usually, I, I think what we've been doing is we've been ending the episodes with like a fun memory, and they've all been trip-related, and, and we just talked about this camping trip that we went on over this past weekend. Uh, maybe we just talk about a couple fun memories from that. What do you think? Yeah, there you go. What was your fun memory? I would say that my favorite memory over this past trip had to be the axe throwing. Yeah. You know, it was something, because we did go with my dad and his wife, my stepmom Maria. They were able to throw some axes with us, which was a blast. Yes. I mean, nothing like setting up your board in front of the ocean, <laughs> looking at the sunset while you're throwing axes. There'll be some footage in here. You guys are going to see it. It was awesome. And uh, you killed me. Yes. I, I played a few games. And I did well. I was worried that you were going to just throw the axe into the ocean, which you almost did a few times. <laughs> a few times. It almost, I actually think I have a video and you can see the axe go right over the dartboard. <laughs> so that's going to be playing as I'm saying that. And uh, what was your, like a couple of your favorite little moments? So I really loved our long walks. So we would take the dogs on pretty long walks. I think one day we ended up doing like five and a half miles or so. Um, and that, that was within two walks. Yeah. I think the last time we took this same trip to the same spot with my dad and uh, my stepmom, we took one walk that was like almost six miles. It was intense. Yes. And that that's that's one of my favorite parts of those trips, because walking around your neighborhood and all that stuff is fun. But there's really nothing like walking on the beach. Yeah. And, and just know? like being able to see everyone having a good time and then having the sun hit you. It's really fun. And then I just love it when our dogs are tired. You know, <laughs> I just love watching our dogs lay down. We got their little area set up, you know, a little gate. We got to ease up, little tent. They have a on. little cabana. Just, you know, yes. they're relaxing in front of the ocean. They love it. They, they've been upgraded quite a bit. I remember the first <laughs> time uh, we actually took them with us camping. And my dad was quite embarrassed because of the little <laughs> shanty town that we put up next to his campsite. But uh, yeah, I just love taking the dogs, taking them on those long walks yeah, and uh, the sunsets. Oh, the sunsets are gorgeous. I, I took a time lapse video, actually, of yeah. one of the sunsets. Uh, we'll play that right now, but it, it's hard to beat a West Coast beach sunset. No, it's, it's really gorgeous. And I also took some photos of the farmer merch sweater. Bangers. <laughs> and I mean, that's like my favorite sweater. So that was a lot of fun and just spending time with everyone. It was just great. I love going to the beach. It's somewhere I've been going with my family since I was very, very little. I would say like seven or eight years old. So almost 30 years at this point. Every time we go, it, it just, I love the fact that it's become something that we go together to as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I had an amazing time over this past weekend. I hope you guys enjoy all the photos and stuff that we yeah. are going to put into this. And even though I wasn't able to go on a Hot Wheel run while we were there, because <laughs> I'm sure I am positive they have some heavy hitting destinations over there. I couldn't have enjoyed myself more just being with family going on these walks during the day, winding down next to a campfire, a couple VIP axe throwing tournaments at night. And I just can't wait to go back again with you. Me neither. And I just, I also love it. And I think that the waves crashing down, you hear them while you're laying in bed. It's just so relaxing and just the best way to reset yourself and start off your Thanksgiving week. Not a better way to start off the holiday <laughs> season. And uh, yeah, is there anything else? I think that's kind of it. That's you know? all, yeah. Is there anything that you want to just, is there a cherry that you like to place on top of this Sunday? Or do you feel like it's already, <laughs> there's cherries already there's abundant a, There's on a it. ton of cherries, but we just want to say thank you guys so much for watching and being so supportive. You guys are great. And just have a great Thanksgiving uh, day and weekend. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye.